One thing that separates pros from your everyday player is technique usage. Sure, they have crazy aiming, building, and game sense too, but their knowledge and use of so many different tricks give them an even bigger advantage on the battlefield. Whether it's to win fights or to assist with rotations, knowing just a few techniques can benefit you guys more in ways than you can ever imagine. What's going on, guys? It's your guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm back. Hey, I want to inspire you guys to not only be good in Fortnite, but to also be great in life. This is your year. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? You got to believe it because you got to believe in yourself. That's where it all starts and you will do the impossible. I want you to connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram because we got a lot going on. So today, I'm going to be showing you guys six techniques that you guys can use to outplay and outmaneuver your opponents. These moves are mostly meant for games that give a tougher matchup like arenas and scrims. They can help you secure the hardest to get kills and are going to work wonders to keep you guys alive during your rotations. So right before we get into that, we have to ask you guys, show your support for pro guys by clicking that darn like button. I just said the word darn again. I just can't help it. I need a shirt that just says I love the word darn and I'm proud of it immediately. Please order me one. It only takes a few seconds, guys, and helps us out in so many different ways. Visit our website in the description for on-demand, 24-7 coaching from some of the best players around. We recently just updated our website, and now it has all the new VOD analysis videos, training articles, and so much more. So check that out. All right, guys, so first off, this is something that you've definitely seen before. If you ever watched any pro players make in-game rotations, these are anti-beam launch pad setups, which are used to lower the height and distance your launch pad takes you. Taking a launch pad without setting up the anti-beam can be very dangerous in a very packed end game. You're going to be stuck floating for an unnecessarily long time, and pretty much you should just have a sign that says, Hey everyone, kill me right now, I want to die. So unless you need the full distance provided by launch pads, using an anti-beam setup it's going to keep you and your teammates much safer. For the absolute shortest distance, place the launch pad down on the floor piece and then put a cone over it. Stand on top of the half of the cone facing the direction you want to launch, right? Edit the cone into a ramp and as long as you're not standing too close to the center, you're going to drop down and launch. This only takes you about a third of the distance a normal launch pad goes and it's useful for rotations up to 70 meters. Be careful though, my friends. You can't have a wall in front of the launch pad or else you're going to end up bunking your head. The next one involves placing a wall behind the launch pad and then a ramp on top of the wall, facing the direction you want to launch. Probably the simplest to set up and viable from inside a box. This one takes you slightly further, up to about 90 meters. The next one is a variation of the previous one, utilizing a bouncer, yeah, to get some extra distance. So, start with the previous setup, okay, and place a bouncer on the wall your ramp is on. If you run into the bouncer at a 45 degree angle, it'll push you right into the launch pad and give you extra height. This one is going to take you about 130 or 140 meters, which is still slightly less than a launch pad by itself. Approaching at the right angle can be a little tricky, guys, so we advise practicing a bit before you start because if you mess up, you're going to end up missing the launch pad entirely, just like my friend, Little Bobby. Yeah, guys, that's true. I, 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 I did miss it entirely. What was I thinking? It's okay, buddy. Don't be too hard on yourself. Okay, I'm going to go play now. All right, bye. If you ever want to go an extremely far distance for whatever reason, set up the bouncer and launch pad combo without the ramp. This combo here can take you up to 300 meters away. Woohoo, that's far. This doesn't even really have too much of an in-game use, but it can still be useful if you're trying to escape the storm or cover long distances in a hurry. One final variation you can use to fine-tune your distance involves putting a second wall up before adding the ramp. You normally can't reach far enough to place the ramp when it's just two walls high. So, instead, place a cone and edit it into a ramp, okay? You can use this with a bouncer or without, depending on how much distance you want. All in all though, my friends, there are over a half a dozen variations you can use to adjust the amount of air you can get with a launch pad. If you can place a marker on the spot you want to land at, you can use the distance it gives you to find out which setup to use. These can end up being extremely important during packed endgames, as too much time spent gliding can often be a death sentence. The next trick also utilizes bouncers to create extra distance, this time though, alongside shockwave grenades. Using this combo woo, can create extra distance for longer rotations and even extra height if you're looking to go up vertically. First, let's talk about the horizontal combo. 
There are a few ways to do this, but the most consistent setup by far is to box up. Place a cone on the ground and put a bouncer on the wall, okay? If you run into the center of the bouncer, you should get stopped in your tracks by the cone. While you're doing this, throw a shockwave at the bouncer, just slightly above the bottom blue arrow. Jump at the last second and you'll shockwave with the added strength of a bouncer. You need to make sure you reverse your direction or else you're not gonna go as far. If you're still holding forward in the opposite direction you're moving, it'll slow you down. Special thanks to Positive Unit on Reddit for sharing this setup. If you're ever looking to launch vertically with twice the normal height of a shockwave, here's what you should do. Box up and place a bouncer on a wall. Face the opposite wall and throw a shockwave. Now, as you do that, backpedal into the bouncer while facing the shockwave grenade, and it should push you right on top of it. With this combo, you can go twice as high. However, if you hit your bouncer at the wrong time or angle, woo, it can mess the whole thing up. But, you know, all things considered, if you're looking to take height that the shockwave can't reach by itself, this might come in handy. Props to Death Skull Fire for sharing. Wait a minute, Wait, what? Death Skull Fire? Bro, props to you, but your name just frightened me. So, there are a bunch of alternative methods that can save materials when needed, like Cypher PK's easy method, or even Speedy Gonzalez pre-edit version. Those are definitely nice and all, they really are. Very nice, but here's a quick little variation on diagonal tunneling that can come in some serious use when you're low on mats. And that should sound like music to your ears. I don't hear anything though. Oh, there it goes, yeah. So start out by placing a ramp and then a floor above it. From here, attach another floor and ramp toward whichever direction you want to tunnel. That's it really, pretty simple, right? As we said, this tunnel barely uses anything, which is amazing, but we got a little problem. It exposes you a lot. You can remedy this by choosing a tunnel next to the storm and by placing walls in the direction of your opponents. As long as you have the storm on one side, guys, you won't have to worry about covering it. Adding just one wall with each ramp closes up most of the angles and still uses fewer mats than traditional tunneling, which is great. Now, a big disclaimer. These methods are only useful for low mat situations. If you have the mats to tunnel regularly, do that instead, please. There's a huge risk of using these types of tunnels, but if you've only gotten a couple of hundred mats and you still have ways to go, knowing how to do these can definitely come in use. Trust me, <laughs> I know. Okay, so we saw this next move on Reddit the other day, and honestly, guys, it's so cool and insanely clever when you break it down and you see exactly how it works. Essentially, it's an expert level edit fakeout that takes advantage of how most opponents even react. So, to start off, you need to be on the defensive inside a box. Once a player starts trying to pressure your wall, you need to quickly edit open your roof, jump to place a cone over your opponent's head, edit the wall in front of you, and then shoot your opponent like BAM! Then they're gonna be like, what in the world just happened? I'm so confused, how did that happen? And then it's gonna come to them. They must watch pro guides. Oh, that's what happened. And one of their hosts, Keith Allen, oh, I love that guy, he's amazing. All right, maybe I'm dreaming, but don't judge me, okay? It's a dream, all right, whatever. Anyways, they're gonna be confused, moving on. The reason why this fake out, guys, is so next level is because of how your typical box fighter reacts to a roof getting edited. Normally, when you're aggressive and you see the top of a one by one pop open, you assume that the player is going to ramp out over you. So to prevent that, the usual response is to place a wall. This move takes advantage of that expectation and counterplays by editing the wall for some free shots. Your opponent is going to be so distracted by placing their wall, they're not even going to see you make the final edit. I guess the problem with this strat is that it requires crazy fast editing mechanics to pull off. Not only do your mechanics need to be, like, on point, but your decision making needs to happen very quickly, not in slow motion. If you let the enemy get even a single swing on your wall, you risk losing control of it. So, guys, do not hesitate when trying out this move, okay? You either do it or you don't. No in-betweens. No maybes. Box fighting fake outs are a fantastic way to punish impatient players, like the classic corner wall bait. If you edit the top left corner of your wall, then wait a fraction of a second for your opponent to try and peek on that side, you can quickly reset the wall and edit the top right corner. With this, you can bait your opponent and create a beautiful right side angle to attack from. Oh, just beautiful. All in all, we think players really need to start utilizing baits and fake outs more often, even if it's something as simple as placing a fake ramp before starting your high ground retake. Anything that can just bait or confuse your opponent will give you a massive edge. You might remember this little shockwave grenade trick from one of our videos about a month ago. You set up three tiles away from your opponent's turtle and throw your shockwave grenade to blast yourself into their box. 
Although this is still a good move against most players, better players might come to expect it these days by now. So if they do, they can set up some traps that'll end your push real quick. So Team Luminosity member Crow.Wave came up with a similar much safer method. By the way, that's a much nicer name. I'm not afraid anymore. Thank you. And it's too good not to share. The initial setup is very similar to the old trick, with just a couple of differences. First, build out three floor tiles from your opponent's roof piece, position yourself at the start of the third tile, and then place a wall at the end of it. Throw your shockwave grenade at the center of the wall and get ready to turbo build, baby. As long as you're not too slow, you can easily just take their floor and cone and edit through for the kill. So what's great about this, my friends, is that this move tends to also break a single wall of your opponent's box, which makes for the perfect distraction. They're going to be so focused on replacing that wall, they're going to totally ignore the roof, which is amazing. So take some time to practice this one. Okay, please do. Fast setup time and proper execution are very needed for this, or else you're going to end up messing up the entire thing. And I know someone who has done this a hundred times, this very mistake. He looks kind of like me. Okay, fine, he is me, whatever. All right, so here's a basic mechanic with a ton of applications we still see a lot of players not using when they should be. Too many of us, even some more experienced players, don't realize that you can continue to hold down your mouse or trigger button after doing another action to immediately place builds when to swap that piece. If you've ever seen Mongrel or any other pro use this move, where you take a wall, you place a ramp, and edit it to secure the kill, you might wonder how they do it so fast. Well, other than the countless hours of practice, <laughs> which is, yes, that's huge, one secret is to not let go of the trigger while confirming your edit. Once you punch the edits in, keep holding the left click as you confirm the edit and switch to your build. It'll place the structure without you having to click again. Voila. This saves you only a fraction of a second, but sometimes, oh my goodness, a fraction of a second is all it takes. The same thing applies when building cover after shooting. If you're trying to build quickly after a pump shot, for instance, you should never be letting go of the trigger. Holding onto it is your best bet for building as fast as possible. There's also a way you can use this to speed up your trap plays. We showed you this edit play not too long ago, but there's a quick bit we forgot to mention about performing it faster. I don't think it's my fault though. If you pull out of your trap first before you start the edit, then follow through normally. You can confirm the edit. Keep holding down left click and release when you're ready to place the trap. Whenever you're trying to make this edit play, you don't want to give your opponent any chance to land a shot, okay? No matter how small. And so every millisecond saved ends up mattering. Guys, it is your guy. Once again, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. And connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. This is going to be the best year of your life. Do you believe that? It is. So be ready for that. Be expecting that, okay? It's going to be great. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, learn something. Show us some love, okay? Like the video, subscribe. And if you haven't already, leave us a comment with any moves of your own that you might want to share, okay? Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed your day and we'll see you soon.